Okay, so uh, now we've got rid of the rockers. The next thing on the agenda is to remove the valves. So we've got the valve spring compressor, an essential item for this. So uh, I've just got the cylinder head on blocks of wood just to make it easier to sort of move around and stand. So then I've got the long top end, and that's going to go over the valve, the valve stem at the top. And then this foot at the bottom goes on the actual head of the valve there. Just to be done up a bit there. And then clamp it up. It's too tight. That won't clamp. If you have it, it's so it clamps. Come on. There we go. Make sure it's on. On as central as you can around the valve. And then wind it up. So what we're doing is we're compressing the spring at the top. That's about as far as my compressor will go so what we've done is i've the compressor the valve spring compressor has done its job i hope you can see that and it's pushed the spring it's compressed the spring and that means the two little collets that sit around the valve stem are now free so i can now use my magnet where am i where are you and i can then pull out the collets hopefully See the other one come out. A little bit of jiggling, and hopefully it'll come out. Come on. Yeah. So that's both collets pulled out with a little magnet. And just one little thing to note. If you can't, uh, those are the two collets either side of the valve stem with the uh, spring compressed. If you can't get those collets out, the chances are that you haven't tightened the compressor up enough. Okay, so if, the, if they're refusing to come out of those collets, just try and put a few more turns on the compressor and you'll probably find that the collets come straight out. So when I release the spring, without the collets, the spring will just come straight off the shaft. So what I can do is I, I can just release the lever, which is what I'm going to do now. It'll be a bit of a bang. Or I can just... I could take the tension off. Well, I'll do that a bit. I'll take a bit of tension off and then release the lever. There we go. And now the valve is free. So we've got the top cover of the valve. Just checking you can see all this. Then we've got double valve springs. We've got an outer and an inner valve spring will almost certainly be changing these because they're what, 50, what, 40, 50 years old? Yeah, 50, maybe about 50 years old, these I'm guessing, unless they've been replaced. And at the bottom, there's the bottom plate, which is quite common, it's stuck to the spring. Okay, and then we've got the actual valve itself, which will now just pull out the bottom. And the uh, very last thing that comes off after the spring's out and the valve's out is this. Um, sort of heat proof washer like an ins an insulating washer okay and that sits on the on the actual head and then the valve spring sits on top of this uh, um, this heat uh, um, resistant washer uh, and I think on these that uh, we'll find that there's these fiber washers are on the exhaust uh, valves but not on the inlet but we'll, we'll find out I'm just going to give this a very, very quick check whilst it's off. But I'll do this properly later. So I'm going to put the valve in fully, or as near fully as I near fully as possible, and then rock it. Yeah. If you put the valve in that far and then rock it, it'll always rock a bit. So you want to put it in as far as you can, then rock it, and that will give you an idea of how worn the guides are. Now I can feel there is a. It's not massive. But there is some wear there. 
Okay, so I'm fairly sure we will probably be replacing the the guides and the valves. But again, I'll have a proper check later on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and I'm going to repeat the process and uh, take the other three valves out. Then when that's done, we'll give the head a quick preliminary clean so we can see things a bit better and it's not all horrible. And then I'll inspect the head in a bit more detail once it's uh, once we've got all the valves out. I'm just giving giving it a bit clean to get rid of the worst of the mess. Yeah, and we've come to the inlet side, and as I thought, there is no insulating washer on the inlet valves uh, underneath the and uh, underneath the valve spring. But on the inlet, what there are are the uh, oil seals, and these little sort of bucket oil seals they clip over the uh, top of the um, valve guide uh, I think you'll find that there should be a little groove in there there's a little groove that the um, the bottom of the seal clips on okay uh, you don't have uh, you tend to have them on inlet and not on exhaust valves because uh, the inlet when the inlet valve opens it's sucking air and that through the carbs and it sucks oil down the inlet whereas of course on the exhaust when the exhaust valve opens then exhaust is being pushed out of the of the exhaust pipes and therefore any air can come is being pushed up the valve guide okay yeah so they are just plain uh so the oil doesn't go down so much you, you can Put them on exhaust sometimes i do probably won't in this case but when we when you have new valve guides fitted you can opt i think to have oil seals on the exhaust as well the problem you've got that you have to be careful of is that there does need to be some lubrication in the valves and of course if you put an oil seal on on the exhaust then uh, it's going to stop virtually any oil going down and that can accelerate wear but you know, I, I have done it without problem before, especially on bikes when I'm worried that they're burning oil down the valves. Okay, we'll carry on. Just one valve uh, left to remove now. Okay, so I've got the head and I've just given it a clean up. So um, I've just washed it in white spirit basically and then washed it out just to get rid of all the horrible gunge off it so we can look at it a bit better. So it's going to be sent off to be vapor blasted or aqua blasted. That's the same process, just different names. And that's basically blast cleaning, but in water um, with quite a soft glass bead. So it's not going to damage the alloy. And also it's a bit, a bit easier to get the uh, beading out afterwards. Although with, as with any blast cleaning, it's very intrusive. And if you don't get rid of all the, blast medium media then um, uh, afterwards then obviously you've got a, a very like sand in your engine basically uh, it's not good but yes yeah, so we're going to have this vapor blasted so I haven't bothered cleaning it totally because it's going to be vapor blasted then I've inspected the head I think the first thing that I've noticed is that there is a bit of damage to the um, uh, to the surface of the head here, so um, there's uh, so we'll we'll have the head skimmed. Um, the valve seats look okay, um, but they'll be recut because I think we're definitely going to have new valve guides. And if you have new valve guides, you have to have the valve seats recut because the valves will sit at a very slightly different angle. They're never quite exactly the same if you put new valve guides in. The, the valves sit at a very, you know, one or two degrees different. And so you might not get a, a, a good seat so that we'll, we'll have new valve guides fitted anyway and we'll have the seats recut. Then I've examined all the threads and there's many threads in the head, all in the manifolds and at the end of the camshafts and for the head steady the spark plugs and so on uh, and they they all look okay i'll get them to check the spark plug threads and all the threads in fact when it's been um after it's been cleaned because that gives us a better idea um, but they look okay but if there's any doubt especially about the spark plug threads then we'll get them replaced 
So we're going to clean it, we're going to skim it, we're going to have new valve guides fitted, we're going to have the valves cut. And we're going to check all the threads, but I think they're okay, certainly on first inspection. And then we're going to have these new exhaust ports inserted, uh, threads, where the uh, downpipe screw in. But as, as I thought before, these have been mended before. So these are already on their second lot of threads. So these have had alloy inserts put in. So you can see where all this, uh, all this weld is. This is where the, the old um, threads have been cut out and then new alloy threads have been put in. And because they're alloy, they're then touched in with some alloy welding. So that's interesting. This is already on its second, um, you know, on, on its new, these are already the second lot of threads and we'll be putting the third lot in. Yeah, um, but apart from that, uh, you know, all okay. But yeah, so always good to give it a bit of a basic clean. You don't want to be sending it off to the engineers all covered in oil and stuff. They're not going to thank you for it. And they're not going to do a great job, of, you know, or if they do, they're going to charge you a lot more just for cleaning it. So at least you've got an idea. You can get a rough idea, you know, what's what needs doing and so on. You can see what you're working with. Okay, so there's that. That's ready to go off now. And I always say with these, I mean, you can see, I know you're probably a Norton lover and people tend to make all ridiculous excuses for these, but, you know, you can see the really poor quality of the casting, you know, on these heads. Because, uh, of course, I think the cast that we use for these heads was probably made, I think, in the 1940s, certainly the 50s, uh, for the Atlas engine and so on. And, you know, it's the same. Oh, God. You know what? I've never noticed that before. Blimey. You know, there's a, no, there's a fin missing here. I've not noticed that before. Oh, blimey, we've got a fin missing, so that needs replacing as well. But anyway, yeah, the, you know, the... The cast that Norton were using, you know, they were 20 years old or sort of 10 years old at least anyway. And they started making them, they just carried on with the same, um, you know, mould. So the casting on, on commando heads is very poor. The finish, you know, they're very rough. Uh, and it's just, a, you know, an indictment of the most British motorcycle industry that they were, this was, you know, they were making engines like this. You know, I don't know, and sending them out with such poor casting. And you know, I, for some reason, I've not noticed that fin before missing. Yeah, weird. I suppose because it's like layered, you just think it goes from that one to that one. But there is, in fact, another one. There should be another one, like in the middle. Right, I'll just get rid of that. But I'm glad we noticed that because. I wouldn't have asked the guy to mend it because I wouldn't have known it was broken. Strange. After all that, I, I never noticed that, even though I've been looking at this head for about, you know, 20 minutes. Right, I'll do the last bit of cleaning and then we'll have a look at the barrels.